Thanks for joining the Abide YouTube channel. For more information about Abide, go to AbideChurchFL.com and enjoy today's message. Oh man, how many of you are excited and expectant for 23? That's half of you, that's good. We could work with half. We can do it. We only need Jesus at 12. I, in my heart, am so excited and expectant. As we took five weeks, we just, my wife and I, from the bottom of our hearts, we want to thank you guys for releasing us for five weeks to go spend time with Jesus and to just go be refilled and renewed and spend time with family. And in the midst of that, we just want to take, can I just take 10, 15 minutes and just share some of what I feel the Lord is emphasizing for us? Because it's important that we set an intention for where God is taking us, right? We're not just going to land somewhere. We're going to go with intentionality where God is taking us, right? Amen? Are you alive? I know God just did a whole lot, but I just, I want to center us around a theme. And then I want us to take communion together and then we'll pray and we'll end. And I know y'all are tired. Y'all were up to 12 o'clock, but we just felt like it was so important and pivotal for us to start the year in the right way. So I just want to honor you and thank you for your sacrifice. You came, but you came tired and you're here. So we honor you for that. So as we were dreaming and just asking the Lord, even at the end of last year, God, what do you have for 2023? We as a body, we received a prophetic word that said to us 2023 for the abide community would be the year of the double yield. Say double yield. Say it again, double yield. You're not going to hear this just in January. This is going to be from January to December. We received, it was a seven, eight minute prophetic word from a person who's actually a prophet, not a cash out prophet, but a real one. And as they released the word, we as the executive team and as the board, we began to pray and ask God. And the word was this, as we had and continue to posture ourselves in a place of surrender, the Lord says, because you have yielded, now you will yield. Now the word yield can mean to surrender, but the word yield can also mean to receive. If you plant seed, you will yield fruit. And so the word we received is as we have surrendered, as we have remained in this posture of humility and positioning ourselves and saying, God, we're going to continue to go low so you can go high because, not just because, but and because we will continue to yield, God says, now you will yield. Now, how many of you want that? This is not prosperity. This is the truth of his word that as we continue to put all of what we have and all of who we are in the hands of God, that He does more than we can think, ask, or imagine with what we have given Him. So because God is a good steward, God wastes nothing. Say nothing. He wastes nothing. Everything given into the hand of God will produce and yield fruit. Say amen. I need you to catch this in your spirit. This isn't a time to glaze over. This is not a break in the day. I'm trying to deposit seed in your heart that can carry you through 2023. Knowing that as I continue to position myself and as I continue to put myself in a place where I say, God, you have everything. God, you have become my, my only desire, my only pursuit, my Psalm 27, one thing that God would begin to rain and pour down blessings upon you and your family. Not just in a moment, but in a lifestyle. Do you hear what I'm saying? God's will for you is not to live from Sunday to Sunday and Wednesday to Wednesday. God's plan for you is to live in abundance. Abundance does not mean you don't have difficulty. It means in the midst of difficulty, you go through and you thrive. You come out the other side knowing and saying, what you meant for evil, God turned for good. So during the sabbatical, I felt like the Lord took us to just kind of process all that had happened in 2022. So much had happened. God brought us to this land. God expanded the ministry in so many ways. So many, God added so many to our family. And in the midst of that, I felt God saying, I still, I still am desiring to tabernacle, to dwell, to habitate among a people that would make the Psalm 132 vow, I will not sleep or slumber or give rest to my eyes until I find the Lord a dwelling place. And in the midst of this season, it was almost every day 
Because when God drops something, how many of you know when God drops something like that, the question becomes how? Sometimes we hear stuff like, wow, God, okay, you do it. No, there is a response to His voice. It's a principle in the Bible. If you will, then God will. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, then I will. It's all throughout the Bible. So God, how? And God continued to take me to Matthew 13. And He would emphasize where Jesus likened the kingdom of God to something. And I want to read it to you. This is going to be the only scripture that I probably drop on you today. But in, John, in Matthew 13, I want you to go there. In Matthew 13, 44, Jesus is speaking among a people. And I'm praying, Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, would you imprint every heart with this by the Holy Spirit. Would you imprint every heart, my heart, God, I'm asking my heart, would you imprint this on my heart? Jesus said in Matthew 13, 44, the kingdom of heaven is like, say like, it is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and he sold everything, say everything. He sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything, say everything. He sold everything he owned and he bought it. And in the midst of asking God, God, the how, I am acutely aware that there are many ways that you can go with this parable. This parable has been spoken in many different ways in many forms or fashions. And you could go 40 different ways with this parable, but what I, what I believe God is emphasizing for us, in, in us saying, God, we want everything you have, that he would say to you, okay, well then will you give me everything you have? Now I want to completely remove some, because automatically everybody's like, oh, here you go. We're talking about money. Let's just remove that real quick. I'm talking about all of your heart. Say heart. Oh, I just believe God is after the heart. That in a people who are saying, God, I want to build you a house and God, I, I want to do this and I want to do that. That God, that we would not just read over the scripture because this scripture has implications in it. It's a story of a merchant that he decided, he made a decision in his heart there was something in his heart that he was in search of something and that something he was in search of was a pearl. <laughs> and somewhere along the line in his life, he had predetermined that I'm going to go on a journey for this pearl. I don't know where it is. I don't know how much it's going to cost. But I know that I know that I'm going on a journey to find something that my heart longs for. And so he goes on this journey. And the scripture doesn't tell us how long he was a merchant traveling the seas. We don't know how long he was traveling from place to place, but all that I know is that along the journey, there was this something in his heart saying, one day, I'm going to find that pearl. As he did his job, as he made new friends and acquaintances, as he did family, no matter what he did, there was still something on the inside that was desiring what? The pearl. It was an aching, it was a longing. And so one day as he goes about, let's say two years down the road, he's finally going about his way and he finds it. He sees it. And he lays eyes on it. And all that his heart has desired and hoped for and longed for is now in front of him, except in this moment, he doesn't have enough to attain that which his heart requires. So now he has a problem. Because he has a deep aching and longing, a burning desire for that thing, but in his own strength, he does not have what it takes to acquire it. So he makes a choice, say choice. He goes home. And as he's going back home, he decides, I've made a decision in my heart that I'm gonna do whatever it takes I'm going to sell whatever I have to sell. I'm going to do whatever I have to do to go back and acquire that which my heart longs for. That's a noble thought. Except when that thought begins to play out, it looks like him going into his house and saying, everything's for sale. The bed's for sale. The couch is for sale. The cowl are for sale. 
The shifts are for sale. I don't know what everything means to you, but to me, everything means everything. And now he has become obsessed with this desire. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? He has become obsessed with this desire. And in a room full like, like this, where there's a bunch of hungry, because this is what you are. If you are in this room, God has implanted into you a zeal and a desire for the more of God. You may not know it, you may not always feel it, but the reason you're in this chair on a Sunday morning on January 1st tired is because something in your heart says, I want more. So the man is selling all of his possessions and as people come to buy the things he's selling, they're asking, why are you selling everything? He's got, you gotta understand, I found the pearl. What, you're gonna sell every, but your house, you're selling everything for a pearl? Yeah, I'm selling everything because you don't understand as I went to bed at night, I had this one thing on my mind. When I woke up in the morning, I, yeah, I went through the motions and there were things I had to do, but there was one thing on the back of my mind. I have to find the pearl. <laughs> so finally he sells everything he has and he goes back and he acquires the pearl. And he probably goes back home to an empty house, everybody thinking he's lost his mind. He's given everything for what? But in the heart of a man, he now had everything his heart desired. And I want to prophesy to you this morning, and I want to declare with all boldness after five weeks, this pearl, this hidden treasure is Jesus. Your year, all that we've sang about, all that we've screamed about is not going to change because a number digit changed on a calendar. All that your heart is longing for, all that you are desiring is going to be found when you become magnificently obsessed with the person of Jesus. Now this isn't something that we strive to do. This isn't like I'm gonna not eat food again until I feel it. This is something that we begin to say, God, I'm asking you on this January 1st to desire that, to deposit that desire into my heart. I'm asking you, God, I understand. Listen, I'm praying that some of you would be delivered in 2023 of the opinions of others. That the opinions and the evaluations of those around you would not hinder you from saying, I have found that which my heart desires. So I'm gonna sit in a prayer room on Wednesday night, on Tuesday morning, on Thursday midday, on Saturday night, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make my own prayer room at home. And it may seem like foolishness, but the word says in 1 Corinthians that the foolishness of man, the wisdom of God seems foolish to man. Meaning this, hear me. The way you live your life should be offensive to those who do not walk by the Spirit. I'm not talking about offensive and, and, and being ugly. I'm talking about offensive and your way of life makes no sense, yet you walk in joy. You walk in stability. You walk in peace. You walk in strength. Your children have a desire for the Lord. They're beginning to dream with God. They're beginning to reassess what really matters. Our teenagers are choosing to be here on a Friday night to be touched by God instead of doing X, Y, Z. And God begins to change the narrative because their people have become obsessed with the pearl. They've gone all in on the great treasure. Are you hearing me? This is what it's going to take for us. I mean, I just, I wrote a few thoughts here at the end because as I've meditated on this story of this man, I'm just thinking about like, he has nothing left, yet he has all. Now, that's not just a sexy Twitter thing. That's real life. The man was left barren in the natural, but in his spirit, man, he had all he ever wanted. And for some of you, 2022 was full of your physical man having a lot of things, but your spiritual man being very empty. And on this day, I believe that there could be a great reversal. It's not gonna be through the right sermon, you can listen to all the Fernick, all the Michael Culianos, and all the upper room you want. Pick your stream. 
There is an itch on the inside of you that only the Holy Spirit found in the secret place can, can, can satisfy. And I believe that this is how Paul got to this conclusion in Philippians 3. He said, but whatever, say whatever. Whatever former things were gained to me as I thought then, these things once regarded as advancement and merit, I have come to consider as loss. So there was once, that scripture is back there. There was once a time in his life where there were things that Paul considered they had worth and they helped me excel and to move forward. But he says, now that I found myself in this place, those things which I once considered as worth, I now deem worthless. Do you see this? Why? It's the question. For the sake of Christ and the purpose which he has given my life. How many of you know your life has a purpose? Come on, your life has a purpose. You're not just aimlessly going through life. God is orchestrating a narrative and a storyline and he will, he will see his purposes accomplished. So those things that I once regarded as, as worthy of much, I now regard as nothing. Why? Because God is going to have his way in my life. But more than that, I count everything. Say everything. That's the word, everything. I count everything as loss compared to the price and privilege and the supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord and of growing, I love the Amplified, and of growing more deeply and thoroughly acquainted with Him, which it says is a joy that is unequaled. Do you see this? There is a joy. <laughs> there is a joy and a satisfaction that is only found in you seeing Jesus for who He really is. Not Jesus through the eyes of Geo or through the eyes of the lens of Abide, but Jesus for you. For his sake, I have lost what? And I consider it all garbage. Not just because I consider it garbage, but so that, say so that, so that I may gain Christ. So the, the question that I feel to ask today is, are you willing? That's what it really comes down to. I want to remove every bit of religious striving from you right now and just take that off of you. Are you willing to position yourself in a place? This probably means like husband, you having a wife conversation with your wife and wife with husband and sitting around the table and asking each other, what does it look like for us to count everything a loss for the sake of Christ? What is it gonna look like for us to make the main thing the main thing? What is it gonna look like for us to prioritize the person of Jesus above all things so that we can have a joy that is unequaled, amen? And I just say this, some will look at the pearl of the glory and, and they will admire, hear me, <clears throat> because my, my hope is that you would not end up in this camp. This is where I'm landing. Some people, they will look at the pearl, they will look at the treasure, they will look at the glory and all of its wonder, but they will decide this, the price is too high. Father, may it not be said of any person in this room, but there will be some that will see the pearl, they will see the treasure and they will determine in their heart, it's too much. And like the man found in Luke 18, Jesus invited that man said, sell all that you have and come follow me. But the scripture said he walked away with a sad face because he was more in love with what he had than the path Jesus had for him. And what I want to pray for us and the commitment I believe the Lord is asking from us this morning is that we would not simply be observers and admirers, but we would be possessors. Do you hear me? Those are two different things. You can come into this sanctuary every Sunday, 52 Sundays in 2023, but there's a difference between a person who admires and claps and a person who possesses. Two different things.
You could be in the midst of people who possess and get caught up in the hype, but it doesn't get mean. And God is saying in this time, will you give your all so that I may become your all? And the, and the response of our heart is, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we are a people. Even, hear me, even if right now all of the things that are in the way start popping up in your mind, you start with this, yes, Lord, my heart wants to. I'm telling you, because within our own strength, there's not a person in this room. But we start with this, yes, Lord, my heart wants to. My heart wants to love you with fullness. We don't want to get caught up in ministry and finding our success and what we're doing. We want to be a, we want to be a person who is fully in love, who is fully captivated, who is loving their wife, who is loving their husband and their children in a way that honors God, who is stewarding their finances in a way that honors God, their time, their talent, their treasure, that everything is His. And in this year of double yield that we can look back and say, look, man, I'm telling you, some of you at the end of this year, you're going to look back and say, man, what we gave, it paled. You're going to remember this. It paled in comparison to what we gave. I felt that way in 2022. I'm like, there's nothing I gave that wasn't worth giving for what we experienced in 2022. Yet still there's more. Because he's the God of more. How many of you believe that? He is the God of more. If you felt stuck in 2022 and frustrated, you were white knuckling, be delivered from that. Make a decision. I'm not going to live like that anymore. I'm not going to be that frustrated dude that nobody wants to be around. I'm not going to be that person. I'm going to choose to live in the freedom that Jesus has given me. So I want to very intentionally kind of land this in communion together as a family. If, if somebody doesn't have communion, can you just raise up a hand? Does anybody not have it? If some of my ushers can just come around and just hand the communion out real quick. Can you throw me that? Just grab your communion for just a moment. Just keep it up high. We're going to wait. We got about 15, 20 minutes here. Father, we just ask in Jesus' name. Would there be a severing with every everything that is hindering? Every thought, every emotion, every stronghold. There's a bunch of people that need them over here. Can we get some help? There should be some baskets somewhere with some communion. Father, we ask in Jesus' name. Even right now, Holy Spirit, would you bring to our mind, to our heart, everything that must be released? Let's just, just take a moment. Let's just, for just a moment, just close your eyes. We believe in this church that the Lord speaks, the Holy Spirit speaks to us. We just ask, Holy Spirit, would you show us? Show us any place that is withheld. Not just withheld, any place that you would like to expand us. Where you say, stretch out your tent pegs. my children, to love those around me. You said in your word that I was to love those the way that I love you. As I love myself, Father, help those in this room to love themselves and to love others. Communion is not just something that we just religiously do. Jesus very, very plainly said, do this 
as you gather in remembrance of me, that it would be a holy time where we would remember the sacrifice that was made so that we could walk in freedom. Complete, total freedom. Body, mind, soul, and spirit. Physical, emotional health. That as we would take the blood in the body of Jesus, that it would cleanse us, that it would wash us, that it would restore us. So right now, I'm asking you to attach some faith to what we are about to do. And as the first act of us together as a spiritual family in 23, that we would set our eyes on Jesus and put our faith in Him. We're not putting our faith in our faith. In our, in our loudness, we're putting our faith in the person of Jesus, who, who the Bible says is the author and the finisher of our faith. The perfecter. about healing from emotional trauma, from physical pain, from ailments, from diseases. That upon you was put that and that you broke your body so that Gio, so that Marcus, so that every person in this room can walk in wholeness. I ask you today by the Holy Spirit, who is alive and active, that you would minister to every single body. Every single body in this room. Even, even as they partake, would you, would you curse diabetes and cancer and depression and anxiety and torment? We thank you that because of your body, we have been made whole. So we thank you for your body that was torn, ripped, and put on a cross for me and for every person in this room. In Jesus' name.
to be just something we do. Let the reality of your shed blood for our sins and the new covenant and everlasting life become reality to us. Let it birth great gratitude in our hearts. Jesus, we thank you for your blood that ushers us in into a new and greater covenant that makes us sons and daughters, that makes us one with you. Lord, we thank you for your blood this morning. We thank you for your washing. In Jesus' name. We intentionally left some space at the end of this time together for prayer. The very specific thing I felt last night as I went to sleep is that we were to pray for prodigals and for lost loved ones. We're going to be really intentional about this in 2023. Those that God puts on your heart, you're going to see them sitting next to you. I'm telling you, because the time is short and the Holy Spirit is at work. So there's a few things that God emphasized for us, and it's actually found in the Bible, that we would emphasize praying, fasting, and giving. It says, when you give, when you fast, when you pray, in Matthew. So we intentionally want to take time to just invite into a time of giving, and then we're going to pray for prodigals and for those. But I just, I feel really, I, I feel burdened by the Lord that we would be really good about what the Bible says. When you give, when you fast, when you pray. It's why we're intentionally starting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of this week, we're going to be fasting together as a body. Every, the first Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of every month, we're going to be fasting as a community together. We're shutting down all staff meetings. We're shutting it all down. We're going to be seeking the face of the Lord, and we're going to end in prayer room on Wednesday nights. January, February, March, April, May, June, the whole year. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're just going to set our face towards the Lord. And we're going to believe that as we come and we ask the Lord for a breakthrough for our family and our loved ones, He's going to hear us because we have voluntarily put ourselves in a place of sowing, of fasting, and of praying. And God responds. As we obey His Word, He responds. Amen? So as our ushers come forward, I just want to pray and I want to bless this. Then we're going to stand and we're going to go into a ministry time. So if I can get some ushers to come up, they're going to put up how you can give. And we're going to talk more about this, this fasting, this giving, this praying. We've done praying all 2022, yeah? We do praying really well. But God's going to give us grace to step into every area. Amen? So these are the multiple ways you can give. And we want to thank you for partnering with the mission, which you see every week, is to build the Lord a house, a place for Him to habitate Him and dwell among a people. If you don't know what that means, read Psalm 132. David made a vow, and we're going directly after that vow. Amen? So hold your seat. If you give on the phone, just lay your hand on your phone. Anoint that thing. <laughs> but I want to pray every single week, and I want to bless you. So, Father, in Jesus' name, Father, I'm believing specifically that you are blessing your people with abundance. I pray that for every family in this room, those that give every single week and they're faithful with their 10%, 15%, 20%, that you would expand it and multiply it and bless them. Promotions, that there would be raises, bonuses, God, that it would impact every area of their life as they trust you with their finances. God, as we trust you with our little bit, that you would pour out and rain out blessings upon every single person in this room. We pray, God, that this, that this ministry would be blessed. That there would be immense presence and glory and fire and wind and provision so that people can experience your presence like never before. Give us grace to partner with you in this way. We give on this January 1st as a first fruit offering for what you want to do this year. I know it doesn't make sense to the world, but Lord, we, we trust you with this portion of our lives. We ask that you bless it, multiply it, and expand it. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen and amen, amen. Bless you as you guys give. There's black boxes in the back. After you give, I want us to all stand. The worship team's going to go into one more song and we're going to be here. This is actually a song of the house that was written here. 
But as we conclude and end, we're gonna be here. Not like we're stopping in the next 10 minutes or so. I just wanna speak to a few people. If you were in this room and you were listening to me share about that pearl, about that treasure, and there was something in your heart that was tugging, pulling, there was something that was tugging and pulling at your heart. Even if there was any hesitation, was saying, I don't know how I'm going to get there. I want to pray over you. Our staff wants to pray over you. And I believe there's something about stepping out and stepping in that is significant. Can God do it in your chair? Probably so. But I believe there's something about us attaching our faith to emotion that is powerful. So if that's you, I'm going to ask you to come to the altars. But also before, if there's anybody in this room that has a loved one on their heart, a son and a daughter, a wife, a husband, a family member, that God, like you know by the Holy Spirit, you have been gripped for their salvation, I want you to come forward. We're going to be putting a, a harvest board, a harvest wall, and we're going to write their names in this sanctuary. And we're going to pray over that harvest wall, every prayer room here in the near future and we're going to begin to write it down and we're going to pray intentionally for those names and God's going to begin to reach those loved ones by the Holy Spirit and we're going to begin crossing off names the same way he did with my brother and many others in this room we just want to come before the Lord and just ask him we don't want to grow cold in this the same way somebody prayed us into the kingdom we together If I can just get some of our prayer team to just come around, we're just going to partner together and they're going to lead us in a song, Who is like the Lord? And we're just going to prophetically re receive this, that there's no one like our God. No matter what, no, no, no addiction, no situation is too far gone for those that are reaching towards God or for those that need somebody to be touched by God. So let's just begin to pray. Father, we just position ourselves in a place of surrender, of yielding. Oh God, we ask you for our loved ones right now. In Jesus' name, would you reach out your hand to sons and daughters? Oh God, we ask you for a holy burden for the lost and the broken to be released over us, God. Friends and loved ones, for sons and daughters, for cousins and uncles. Oh God, we call out to them by name right now. Just even by name, just begin to call out, God, we cry out. We ask that you break off addiction, that you break off blindness and discouragement. That you break off hopelessness. That you break off religion. That you break off offense. We thank you that you stretch out your hands to heal. You will supply all of their needs according to your glories and riches. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to burn.
Lord, we want to know you in all these ways. You're omnipotent. You're holy. Mighty. You are God with us. You're the King of kings. strong and mighty. We declare the King of glory to come into every situation. Would you even right now send your angelic host into crack houses, into places of torment, into houses riddled with depression, and would the angelic host just come in and break every demonic power? in my heart. We just want to say yes and amen. Would you just lift up your hands just all across. If that's you, we just, want to, we just want to pray. We want to partner with the word of the Lord. Anybody else, just lift up your hands if I can get my staff. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask it to become a reality. You want this more than they do. We're asking God become the magnificent obsession. Become the soul desire become the Psalm 27 one thing. Make her a Bethany. Make her a resting place. Release desire. We thank you for the faithful ones. We thank you for the faithful ones. God, we thank you for pouring out richness and blessing. God of God. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you with every part of our lives. You have become the sole desire. Release an anointing to abide, to rest, to remain. person in this room, that as they open up your word, that it would become alive. Your word says that your life is it, it, it's living, it's active, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, it divides. We're asking that as, as every person in this room, they start this year, as they open up this Bible, that it would come alive, that their spirit would become nourished by your words, that it would become true food. We ask as they go to bed at night, that you would release dreams. If you've been desiring this, I just ask, let, just lift up your hands and receive. We ask for dreams and visions and visitations, God. It says in the last days there will be dreams and visions. We're asking, God, would you release it in this room? Father, I ask that you give us grace to discern and what places you would have us yield so that we may yield 
as we step into the year of the double yield. Show us where we may yield so that we may yield. That you would become everything so that we can have everything. That we would seek first the kingdom of God above all else so that we would receive all that we need. praying together as a spiritual family I just I even felt like as we were praying that the Lord would say buckle up I feel like some of you God is going to take you on some adventures that you never even thought were possible I just prophesy that towards you it's not just good luck hoping some of you God is going to by the spirit lead you and it's like oh the places you will go oh the places you will go not just in the natural but in the spirit so why don't we just grab the hand of the person next to us. Hey, Pastor Steve, will you come up? Will you just pray? I'm going to ask Pastor Steve pray. Pray to the person next to you. Let's just, as a, as a family, pray together that God would release blessing, that he would release increase, that this would be, 2023 would be the best year ever because we have. As Pastor Steve leads us, let's just pray together. Uh, Father, we just thank you so much. Thank you for family. Thank you for spiritual family. Thank you, Father, that as a community, God, that you will draw us closer together. Thank you, Father, this will be a year of blessing, a year of walking in the goodness of God, of knowing your goodness, of seeing your goodness, of tasting your goodness, Father, of experiencing everything there is to have of you, Father. And so, Father, even as Pastor Gio was speaking about that pull of great price, God, we say yes and amen, yes and amen to that, Father, to our families, to our relationships, to every area of our lives. We say we want the pull of great price, and we step into that this year, Father, knowing that the next 365 days, God, will be 365 days of experiencing your goodness in different ways. And so, Father, right now, we just release a blessing of that goodness over every individual here, over every family, over every marriage, over every relationship, God, that your hand would be upon us, God. Father, every area of dysfunction, we call it into a place of function this year, God. We call things to turn around, God. Relationships, Father, we thought would never rebirth, God, that you'll bring restoration and bring back those relationships again, Father. And so we thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. We thank you, Father, for who you are, God. And God, we declare that this will be a year that we step into things that we have never experienced in you before, God. We thank you for that now in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we just give God a hand just real quick? We praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you.